Good morning to one and all. I am Dr. M. Shanavas, Professor and Dean of Mechanical and Automation Engineering. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the unconventional machining process. Then what is the need of unconventional machining process? Already there is a conventional process, machining process are available uh, nowadays and it is in the early stage also. Then we have to know what is the need of the unconventional machining process. Actually, uh, over the last 70 years, uh, engineering operation temperatures, that is vast development of aerospace and rocket industries are happened after the, actually after the Second World War. At that time, they want to uh, manufacture or invent the materials with light weight and high strength. So in the operating temperature have been increased by more than 1100 percentage when the development of the uh, aerospace industries. The aircraft skin the operating temperature requirement have been increased by 2500 uh, percentage to withstand the increased friction resulting from extreme high speed because of the aerospace and rocket industries. At that time, if we, from the graph we have to in the year wise, we know the ultimate tensile strength, how much it increases. In 1915, how much? It is nearly uh, 400. After that, 1960, after 67, uh, it is increased nearly up to um, 10,000 uh, 10, ultimate uh, kg per centimetre per centimetre square. So, according to that, uh, very hardness and strength materials are produced. The workpiece is too flexible or slender to support the cutting or grinding forces. The shape of the part is complex, such as internal and external profiles or small diameter holes. Surface finish or tolerance better than those obtainable conventional process. Temperature rise or residual stress in the workpiece are undesirable. So actually what happened, what is the difference between conventional and unconventional machine process? When they, when they invented the new materials, very hard materials, very high strength materials, lightweight materials, it is very difficult to machine it. In the conventional method, actually the material strength when we compare with the tool material. The hardness of the tool material must be harder than the material to be machined. After the invention of the new material, the conventional available tool materials are unable to machine the high hardness material. In that condition, they are tends to produce new or invent new machining process. On that ground, they are using some of the energies. Energies are used to machine the material. Actually, in the cutting, in the conventional method, the cutting tool and the workpiece are always in physical contact with a relative motion against each other, which result in friction and a significant tool wear. There's a So in the non-traditional process, there is no physical contact between the tool and workpiece. Although in some non-traditional process, tool wear exists, it rarely is a significant problem. Material removal rate of the traditional process is limited by the mechanical properties of the work material. Non-traditional process easily deal with such difficult to cut materials like ceramics, and ceramic based tool materials, fiber reinforced material, carbides, titanium based metal lines. So in the non-traditional machining process or unconventional machining process, there is no contact between the tool and the workpiece. Only the energies are used to machine the material, the hard material. Any hard material can be machined. There is no contact between the tool and the workpiece. In traditional process, the relative motion between the tool and 
workpiece is typically rotary or reciprocated. Thus, the shape of the workpiece, work surface, is limited to circular or flat shapes. In spite of widely used CNC systems, machining of three-dimensional surfaces is still a difficult task. Most non-traditional processes were developed just to solve this problem. Machining of small cavities, slits, blind or through holes is difficult with traditional process, whereas it is a simple work for some non-traditional process. Traditional processes are well established, use relatively simple and inexpensive machinery, and readily available cutting tools. Non-traditional processes require expensive equipment and tooling as well as skilled labor, which increases significantly the production cost. Then classification of process. There are different types of energies are used in the unconventional machine process for machining the material. There are mechanical processes are there, electrical processes are there, thermal processes are there, chemical processes are there. So different energies are used to machine the material by different types of machining process. In the mechanical metal removal process, it is the material is removed by erosion or indentation processes. So it is characterized by the fact that the material removal is due to the application of mechanical energy in the form of high frequency vibrations or kinetic energy of an abrasive jet. There are different types of machining process, mechanical based machining process are there. Ultrasonic machining process, abrasive jet machining, water jet machining. These are the some important machining process. The electrochemical process, it is based on electrochemical dissolution of materials by an electrolyte under the influence of an externally applied electrical potential. The process may be electrochemical machining, electrochemical grinding, electrochemical deburring operations. Then it comes the thermal method. That is temperature based. The material is removed due to the controlled localized heating of the workpiece. It results into material removal by melting and evaporation. The source of heat generation is such as can be widely different. Electric discharge the process are electrical discharge machining, plasma arc machining, electron beam machining, laser beam machining. These are some of the thermal based materials. The first we will see the mechanical based material, the abrasive jet machine. So as the name implies, the abrasive jet machine. So a jet formed by abrasives. So the abrasive jet is used to machine the material. What is a mechanism? The abrasive particles, the fine abrasive particles in the micron level are mixed with the carrying gases. It is mixed in the mixing chamber and the abrasive jet is made to come out through the jet in the nozzle. It is just like a jet. So when this abrasive jet particles are made to impact on the workpiece, the abrasive particles, the abrasive particles are the is irregular in shape, not a rounded one, it irregular shape, it with some sharp edges. So the irregular abrasive particles at a high velocity when it impact on the workpiece, small indentations are produced. When the abrasive particles continuously impact on the workpiece, the indentations made continuously and the metal is eroded in the form of fine, uh, fine uh, abrasive uh, mat materials, fine particles are removed in the, from the workpiece by the abrasive particles. That is the mechanism. So a stream of fine grain abrasives mixed with air or suitable carrier gas and high pressure is directed by means of a nozzle on the work surface to be measured. The material 
removal is due to the erosion and erosive action of a high pressure jet. So metallic tumor indentations are produced because when it is impact continuously, the metal is eroded from the surfaces. Abrasive jet machining differ from the conventional sand blasting process in the way that the abrasive is much finer and effective control over the process, parameters and content. Used mainly to cut hard and brittle materials which are thin and sensitive to heat. So, and the abrasive particles are mixed with the gases or air. The heat is produced may be taken away by the gases. So it is a cold cutting. Then brittle materials like glasses can also be machined by abrasive particles. So, but in the conventional method it cannot be machined the brittle materials. So it will break. So it is advantages of the unconventional machine process. So here this is embrace this. This is a jet. This is a nozzle. This is the jet comes out. This is a, just like a jet. So the, from the no, above the nozzle, the gas air abrasive particles velocity in the cases of 150 to 300 meter per second. It comes at a high velocity. This is a nozzle tip made of tungsten carbide or gem or synthetic sapphire. So nozzle, this is a distance between the nozzle tip distance or standard distance. 0 0.3 to 20 mm depends upon the workpiece to be measured. When the abrasive particles, high velocity abrasive particles impact on the workpiece, the metal is eroded from the surfaces. When the high velocity the abrasive particles impact on the workpiece, it will rebound back. It is after the impact, it will rebound back. Then why the nozzle is made just like a conical shape? instead of a square or a rectangle size. The nozzle is the costliest material. It is made by tungsten carbide or a gem or sapphire. When the abrasive particles rebound back, it may, if it is a square size, it may impact on the nozzle, it will be eroded. So the unwantedly metal is wasted. To avoid that, the nozzle is made as a conical shape. So this is the construction. So as, the, as we discussed earlier, the abrasive jet is produced. Very good, a gas or air, high pressure air and the abrasive particles, fine abrasive particles are required. So this is the construction. This is a gas supply or if we are using the air, we have to use a compressor instead of a cylinder. Then it is passed through the filter and it comes to the mixing chamber this is a mixer the mixer is uh, mixing chamber is by using the vibrator it is vibration will take place because of the vibration we can increase the vibration or decrease the vibration by that increasing or decreasing we can easily mix the quantity of the abrasive particle with the gas it is mixed together and it enters through the process it comes through the hose and finally comes out as a jet through the nozzle. So food control, we can control it, we can stop the supply of the abrasive jet by using the food control bar. This is a hand holder. It will impact on the workpiece and the machine metal is machined. So this is a hook. As I already told, the metals and the abrasive particles after impact the material, it will rebound back. If there is no hook is available, uh, it will be uh, made a dust surfaces so it will affect the operator for that the hot exhaust hot is used to uh, suck the abrasive particles and we can send it to the other collecting tank so abrasive particles are normally aluminium oxide or for aluminium and brass based material, silicon carbide for stainless steel and ceramic materials, bicarbonate of, of soda for Teflon surfaces, subsurfaces, glass beds for polishing surfaces. Normally, the size is 
nearly 10 to 15 micron only. The quantity is depends upon the uh, work material and the material removal. It is 5 to 15 liters per minute for fine work, 10 to 30 liters per minute for usual cut, 50 to 100 liters minimum per minute for rough cuts. So depends upon our requirement, we have to mix the abrasive particle with the gases. Pressure, gas pressure also can be various. The abrasive particles must be irregular in shape with the sharp edges. It should not be rounded off. The used abrasive particles should not be reused. The uh, uh, should not be reused because the eroded material also mixed with the abrasive particles. If we use this, reuse the abrasive particles again, the metal particles or metals or minute metal particles may be stick on the nozzle. This is in the surfaces. If we use the abrasive particles, reuse the abrasive particles, the abrasive particles contains the eroded. This metal is eroded. The eroded particles also mixed with the abrasive particles. We should not reuse it. If we reuse it, it will stick on the inside the nozzle. So it will restrict the passages. So automatically the velocity decreases. So we should not reuse it. Then what are the mediums? Gas of different types of dry air can be used. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Quantity is 30 liter per minute of medium can be used. Velocity is 150 to 300 meter per minute. Then pressure is nearly 200 to 1300 kilopascal. The nozzle material is tungsten carbide or sapphire, synthetic sapphire. Standard distance normally 2.54 to 75 mm. Diameter of the nozzle is 0.13 to 1.2 mm. Operating angle is 60 degree to vertical. The factors affecting the metal removal rate. The types of abrasives and abrasive grind sizes. Up, then flow rate, standard distance, then nozzle pressure. These are the parameters which affect the uh, metal removal rate. Then, the abrasive flow rate. For well, how it abrasive flow rate affect the metal removal rate? Uh, there is a, it can be explained by the user graph, metal removal rate versus abrasive flow rate. Then the abrasive flow rate increases. When the abrasive flow rate increases, automatically the metal removal rate also gradually increases. After some time, it will metal removal rate comes down. In all the cases, in all the cases, the metal removal rate comes down after the obtaining an optimum level. Then why it is happened? Because when the abrasive flow rate Abrasive flow rate increases. When we gradually increases up to this point, more abrasives are coming into action. When more abrasives are coming into action, the more indentations are produced. If more indentations are produced, the metal removal erosion taken place higher. More metal is removed up to some level. Then in it gradually increases the metal removal abrasive flow rate. If the abrasive flow rate quantity increases, abrasive quantity increases, the pressure, the velocity comes down because the uh, air, uh, carrier gases only to shift the abrasive flow rate, abrasive particles, not in a high velocity. If velocity comes down, if the velocity comes down, the impact force comes down. If the impact force comes down, the metal indentation is very less. By that, it gradually increases. So at the optimal level only, we have to increase the abrasive flow rate. So abrasive flow rate also affect the metal removal rate. This is the case. Then, the constant mixing ratio. Abrasive flow rate versus metal removal rate. The constant mixing ratio is constant abrasive particles divided by the abrasive carrier gases. When it is constant, the abrasive uh, metal removal rate constantly increases, but it is not possible. It 
graph incre increases uh, indicates that abrasive when the mixing constant ratio at constant mixing ratio the metal removal rate can be increases steadily then the mixing ratio also up to at the certain level only the ma maximum metal removal rate increases the after that comes down so we cannot increases the metal mixing ratio abnormally after some time the metal removal rate comes down only then gas pressure if the gas pressure increases the metal removal rate increases because the velocity the impact force is more the, the, when the in, impact force is more the metal removal rate indentation is made high the metal removal rate is increases what are the advantages of the EEG? there is a low capital cost less vibrations uh, good for difficult to reach area no heat is generated in your piece ability to cut intricate some complex shapes holes of any hardness and brittle brittleness in the material ability to cut a fragile bright, brittle hard and heat sensitive materials without damage there are some disadvantages are there as low material removal rate uh, due to stay straight cutting accuracy is affected uh, the spray uh, virus is embedded in the, the particles normally the particles may be embedded on the workpiece in, in the case of soft workpieces abrasive powder cannot be reused i told you what is the reason in the, if a soft material is machined the, at the high velocity the abrasive particles may be impact, uh, impact on the workpiece if it stick on the surfaces then we cannot accurately cut it. There is a straight cutting and they may be happened on the workplace. Then applications of the abrasive gel machine uh, for abrading and frosting places. It is more economical than acid etching and grinding. For doing hot surfaces, safe removal of smears and ceramics oxides on material. Resistive coating is extra from force to delicate to withstand normal scrapping. Delicate cleaning such as removal of smudges from anti documents. Machining semiconductors such as germanium etc. Everything can be done. Then the next is a water jet machine. Then what is water jet machine? As the abrasive jet, abrasive is abrasive jet is used for machine. As the name implies, water jet. Water jet, like the abrasive jet, here we are using a plain water, it is made as a jet at high velocity for machine the surfaces. What is the principle? What is the mechanism? When the high velocity water jet is made to impact on the material, what will happen? All the materials are made by bonding, by, uh, by atoms and molecules. When the force created by the water jet is more than the bonding strength of the material, it will split. That is a mechanism. So the high velocity, we cannot machine very hard material by using simply a water jet machine. The soft and particular materials, cardboards, then corrugated sheets. Soft material can be machined. The water jet machining involves directing a high pressure, nearly 152,000 MPa high, vel high velocity, that is 542,400 meter per second. Water jet, that is faster than the speed of the sound, to the surface to be machined. The flow, flow rate is typically from 0.5 to 2.5 liter per minute. So high velocity is jet is made to impact. So the, the velocity, the kinetic energy of the water jet after striking the work surface is reduced to zero. That is, it is converted into pressure energy. The kinetic energy, when it is impact on the workpiece, it is kinetic energy is con comes to zero. At that time, the bulk kinetic energy of the jet is converted into pressure energy. This pressure energy 
is more than the bonded strength of the material. When it is more, the atoms are released. If the local pressure caused by the water jet exceeds the strength of the surface being measured, the material from the surface gets eroded and a cavity is thus formed. There is a mechanism. The water jet energy in this process is concentrated over a very small area, giving rise to high energy density, nearly 10 power 10, what by mm squared. So this is the construction, construction of the water jet machine. So we need a water supply, then high pressure pump, then through the control walls it is passing through the nozzle and comes out as a jet. So frequent supply of water is required. The water is sent to the pump, high pressure pump or it is called as a intensifier. The intensifier is sent to the accumulator, then it is passed through the intensifier, it is used to increase the power, pressure of the water. Then it controls and through the valve we can restrict it. Through the sapphire nozzle it comes out. When it is comes out, the metal is removed in this way. It is cut. It is come, finally comes to the dry. When it is comes out after the workpiece. Before drying, we use a catcher because high sound is produced, high splashing is obtained. To avoid that, the catchers, catchers are used. Sketcher is a cylindrical uh, jar like that, some particular one to one and a half uh, meter height. If the height to be reduced, the steel bars are placed in these uh, catchers and the metal, the water collector metal, uh, water is can send to the dry. It may be filtered and we can reuse it. Then, water is the most common fluid use, but additives such as alcohols, oil products and glycerol are added when they can be dissolved in water to improve the fluid characteristics. A typical work material in fall involves soft metals paper, cloth, wood, leather, rubber, plastics and frozen food. If the work material is brittle, it will be fractured. If it is ductile, it will cut back. The R phase is often made to made of sapphire and it is diameter ranges from 1.2 mm to 0.5 mm. We have to use the A pump along with the intensifier. It is used to increase the pressure. The cutting head comprises of nozzle and work table movement. Filter unit for debris, then pour of impurities. Advantages no heat is produced because the water takes away all the heat. Cut can be started anywhere without the need for pre drilled holes. No need of a pre drilled holes. Then work produced is minimum. Environmentally safe and friendly manufacturing. The application comes for use for the cutting composites, plastics, the fabrics, rubber, wood products, etc. Also used in uh, food processing industry. Then next advancement is abrasive water jet machine. What is abrasive? What is the need of abrasive water jet machine? So previous slide, we are using the machine machine to soft materials like the leather and cardboard like that. If we want to a cool cut on a hard materials, we are going for the abrasive jet machine, abrasive water jet machine. So the name implies in the water jet, we are mixing the abrasive particles to increase the metal removal rate or to remove the uh, machine the hard material. The rate of cutting in water jet machine, particularly while cutting ductile material is quite low. So cutting rate can be achieved by mixing abrasive powder in the water to be used for machine. So automatically 
the abrasive particles mixed with the water it will impact on the workpiece by that the indentation just like uh, the abrasive jet machine the indentation are produced the metal machining can be improved in abrasive water jet cutting a narrow focused water jet is mixed with the abrasive particles so this jet is sprayed with very high pressure resulting in high velocity that cut through all material the presence of abrasive particles in the water jet reduces cutting forces and enables cutting of thick and hard material steel plates over 80 mm thick can be cut the velocity of the stream is up to 90 meter per second about 2.5 times the speed of the sound so this is the construction of the jet mixing chamber and everything in the abrasive water jet machine so here this is a high pressure pressurized water comes into the chamber and this is a mixing chamber in the mixing chamber here through this connection abrasive jet abrasive or we need to make passes through this passage there is a larger surface switching chamber when the high velocity water jet comes in this region the vacuum is produced the pressure drop is produced in this area by that the abrasive particles are entrapped sucked through this and it is mixed in this mixture in the mixing chamber abrasive particles mixed with the water then it will make to impact on the workpiece comes out through the water uh, focusing nozzle it is impact on the workpiece then it will comes out after removing the material in all the cases <coughs> it is a water jet distance standard distance or nozzle workpiece jet jet distance here to maintain a distance if the distance increases if the distance increases the velocity decreases so we have to maintain a optimum distance standard distance in between the two layer the workpiece that is very much important so our abrasive water jet cutting process was developed in 1960s to cut materials that cannot stand high temperature for stress distortion or metallurgical reasons such as wood and composites and traditionally difficult to cut material For example the ceramics glass stones titanium and ice can be machined so these are the materials machined by using the abrasive jet machine this is it this is my tool well and remove the material in this area it can be computerized we can machine any intricate surfaces easily automated then next mechanical machine process is the ultrasonic machine process ultrasonic means it is vibration under high, high, high velocity ultrasonic level so the tool is made to vibrate at ultrasonic level right frequency the history is the rules of ultrasonic technology can be traced back to research on the piezoelectric effects conducted by Pierre Scully around 1880 he found that asymmetrical crystals such as quartz and natural salt potassium sulfate generate an electric charge when mechanical pressure is applied conversely mechanical vibrations are obtained by applying electrical oscillations to the same crystals frequency varies of up to <coughs> 1 million cycles per second have been used in the ultrasonic industry today's ultrasonic applications include medical imaging and testing for cracks in air space air of an air space constructions ultrasonic waves the ultrasonic waves are sound waves of frequency higher than 
20,000 Hz. Ultrasonic waves can be generated using mechanical, electromagnetic and thermal energy sources. They can be produced in gases including air, liquids and solids. Magnetostructive transducer use the inverse magnetostructive effect to convert magnetic energy into ultrasonic energy. This is accomplished by applying a strong alternating magnetic field to certain metals, alloys and rods. Piezoelectric transducers employ the inverse piezoelectric effect using natural or synthetic single crystal such as coins or ceramics such as barium titrate which have strong piezoelectric behavior. Ceramics have the advantages over crystals in that way, in that they are easier to shape by casting, pressing and extruding.